Welcome back to the Tidy Empire. This is Mike. Today I've got a topic to discuss that I've been kind of contemplating for some time now, and that is, do you spend more time enjoying what you have or worrying about being concerned about what you don't have? Today, I want to talk about this concept. I want to say that I've got this licked and mastered, and as I collect 85 different toy lines between vintage and modern, I'm going to talk about how this affects both modern and vintage collectors and how maybe this video sets you free. Coming up. You know, it's interesting when you watch content creators, you can tell like we all seem to have our own mindset, things that we worry about or are concerned about. Well, I keep going back to stuff that I missed out on, and this Koldar, it had bothered me for a long time. I actually was in front of my computer, and I was I had everything ready to check out, but I added one more because my son walked by and said he wanted one. So I was like, all right, let me add that extra minute of time I missed out on Koldar. And I considered buying one for like 30 bucks on the secondary market, but I was like, that's way too much for a $15 figure. Now, 80 bucks is not enough for a $15 figure on the secondary market. That's just how collecting goes. I stopped worrying about that a long time ago, actually. I just bring it up in conversation when I make videos, but I'm like, where would I put a cold art? But would 80 bucks add to my display? I really don't know how to capture a display with an attorney and all this stuff in there in one picture to, to capture it all. It's kind of tough. But uh, in video, I will be doing a video eventually, a collection update. But I've got like 18 projects to complete before I do that. Anyhow, what would Koldar do for this display? Not much. So why would I stress over missing out on one figure? I actually just enjoy what I have. Well, with Masters of the Universe, I actually found out something about myself. I'm only a casual Mo2 collector. I don't really need to go that deep with it. Mattel Creations made me realize that as much as I like Too Bad, and I've got the 2000X version, I've got the actual Classics version, and I've got Masterverse version, I've got Vintage version. I missed out on the Origins one, and I don't even care. Like, I don't even care at all. I thought, well, maybe if I find one on the secondary market, nah, don't care. And so that's what kind of made me realize I don't have, I'm not a completist with Motu, and I don't need to be, but I can seriously enjoy the stuff that I have without buying anything else going forward. Lately, I've been enjoying my collection more than worrying about what I'm missing. When it comes to G.I. Joe Classified, actually, when it comes to G.I. Joe Classified, I'm, as I get the Super 7 version, I box up the old Classified figure, put it away, and put the Super 7 in front. But I've been coming up with creative ways to display Super 7 slash Classified, because if uh, Super 7 doesn't make a character, Classified has it, and mixing and matching the two, as you can see, doesn't really work that well. So you gotta come up with creative ways to display them. And so that's this is my way of enjoying the collection, is through the displaying of it in creative ways, because I'm not allocating a thousand feet, cubic feet, square feet, to uh, a Classified slash Super 7 collection, it is an integration of a display. This is integrated into my G1 display. And I've got a lot more ideas on how I can execute this, but this is how I'm enjoying what I have. And not at all stressing about like now 15 figures in classified that I have not picked up. I won't be stressing about that at all. And you, why? Like, why would you need to stress about that? Now, if I only collected, if I don't collect the, the other 84 toy lines, and I only collected G.I. Joe Classified, I think it would be a bigger deal to me. And if you only collect one thing and you're very narrowly focused, spending $50, $80 on a figure you missed out on makes a lot more sense than for someone like myself where it's, in the grand scheme of collecting a drop in the bucket. And yeah, I'd rather spend the 55 bucks on a Super 7 one anyway, but creative ways to make the display work is a lot of fun. So this is another example of enjoying what you have being more fun than stressing about 
what you're missing or what you don't have. Next, we want to talk about kind of a little bit on this Vintage Joe mission. As you can see, I have compiled my figures into one centralized display like I've done with every other toy line except G.I. Joe. It's it's weird. Every other toy line I've done this except G.I. Joe I left scattered all over one giant display. I think it looks better where all the figures are centrally located instead of scattered around. But then again I've seen great displays where it's spread out like you spread out the figures with the vehicles and stuff. So there's a lot of ways to display Joe. This is just the way I'm going right now. But it doesn't matter. I'm enjoying what I have versus, well, at the same time, I am taking note of what parts and pieces I'm missing, figures that are missing. It's not complete. I don't have all 500 and all the different color variations, all that stuff. But I'm not stressing too much about that, am I? Anyway, this is a lot of fun. So when it comes to the vintage collecting, it, it's more finite. There is only so much out there to complete a line now you can get into the same figures that were released in different countries figures that are released in other countries that you want to track down there's a lot of that kind of stuff there's variants packaging variants and that kind of stuff but when it comes to say kenner and their superpowers there's only 33 figures but i'm still missing one and that'd be the cyborg figure now i've got some cyborg figure as a fill-in there's other options that are out there there's a really nice looking uh reproduction custom floating around for like 200 bucks but it's held together by magnets i don't like that kind of stuff but i want to say that i just got to a point and i'm there and happy with it satisfied with the superpowers collection and same thing as you can see in this picture dune and clash the titans quite satisfied with those could I say, yeah, I think Dune's pretty much complete, but Clash of Titans, no. And I don't, I don't have the, the Kraken, so I made my own Kraken. And so there's things that you could do to just enjoy your collection versus stressing about, I don't have a cyborg. Some of the things when it comes to G1 Transformers, I thought about some of the things I wanted to do with my G1 Transformers collection because I did buy all this stuff really cheap decades ago. And with that, there's a couple of pluses to buying it decades ago. If you buy, buy them decades ago and then keep them in very good condition for decades, then there's pretty much zero wear and tear on these that I've done to them since I've gotten them. But I've been going through kind of a phase of fixing up figures that I've had for decades and making the best version of each character. And this is something I've been doing over the past couple of years. In some cases, I look and say, Deluxe Insecticons. Now it's real easy to get the standard first three Insecticons. There's a lot of different options available for that. There's not as many options available for these Deluxe Insecticons. So that's kind of, kind of why I went on that mission and I took and built my best two because I had several of each of these, but I, I had to actually pick up a new figure in this process, but it was kind of fun. And this is enjoying what you had. In fact, I really have had these for so long and did nothing with them. So making the video was actually the smaller part. It was the disassembling every one of them and reassembling them into whole working figures was the big part and then the video was the easy part but with that enjoying what you have same thing about omega supreme that was another one and i do have to give a shout out toy base 10 steve up there because he kind of knows stuff that he sold me in the past and i guess he he's kind of knows me well too that i'm i wasn't seeking out parts for g1 transformers online or anything i just was picking stuff up from him and he kind of remembers what he told me last. He's like, hey, I think you still need some of these parts. And he helped me complete these. So that was really awesome for that. And for a decent price. I wouldn't lose an arm or leg. You have to pay shipping and all that kind of stuff. So it uh, was good to make the video here. And I did. Made this video. Enjoyed the Omega Supreme. This, these are some of these projects I've done over the past year, 
or two. And uh, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but when I was doing the Robotech week, it just kind of made me realize with everyone saying you must love Robotech because you like Jetfire. And I never really even thought about that. I was like, no, I just like Jetfire. I've always have liked Jetfire. And I got all these really cheap over the course of about 20 something years. And one of those is my original childhood one that I bought with my own money at a Toys R Us back in the 80s. But with that, I did go through a phase of restoring these, fixing these, and one figure ended up having to be a casualty of getting the other tin to be in good shape. Through pulling parts and pieces off of it to make the other ones whole. Still, that was a lot of fun. That was a fun project back in the day. Same thing with Metroplex, and I got excited about Metroplex mostly because of all of the talk about these 3D printers, 3D printing big ones, and then Light Toys was supposed to make a big one. Uh, Lou and Resources is making a big one, but I got excited about Metroplex, so I started digging out through all my parts bags to complete one Metroplex. Actually, I could. I made one complete and another one really close to complete so that I could make this video. And as recently, I, the G1 Superion literally got excited about the Fans Toys one coming out, so I decided to make the G1 Superion video. And I was excited about the G1 Superion, but I had to go through a bunch of bags and parts and pieces to find the weapons accessories. I knew I had them somewhere, and that's just uh, some fun. That's enjoying what you have. And no, not everything in this picture is complete. I was able to piece together one complete Superion. I'm fine with that. So I'm curious what everybody else thinks about this. What do you think about enjoying what you have versus stressing about what you don't or what you're missing? And with that, how do you prioritize the next piece in your collection? What you're getting next? I really feel like when you're a modern collector, you are told what needs to be your priority by what's coming up, the next HasLab, the next wave of figures that's coming. When it's vintage, I think it really is more about you. Let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe. Turn your hair out.